Hello and welcome, my name is Ryan, I'm also known as RM2K Dev. Now in this video, we're going to be continuing on with our racing tutorial series. Uh, in this video, we're going to be doing the NPC AI. I think uh, we may do some other stuff with our player, just add some extra extra features. So uh, the first thing we're going to do, uh, I forgot to do this in the last video, is we're going to add brakes. Obviously that's kind of an important thing to have. So what we need to do is we just say, we're just going to copy the gas section here and we're just going to paste that below. We're going to call this section brake. Instead of gas value, we're going to call this brake value. And instead of the shoulder RB, we're going to use the shoulder LB. And this is going to be the left trigger. So right trigger to accelerate, left trigger to brake. We do the same thing here if the brake value was greater than 0 0.1. And all we're going to do in this section here, we're going to do a little bit of uh, trickery. We're not going to use the physics forces to break, what we're going to do is we're going to apply uh, some linear interpolation to our speeds. So if we say PHY speed x equals lerp, so that's linear interpolate, PHY speed x to 0, and we're going to do that at a speed of 0 0.05. We do the same thing for y, and that's going to give us a braking functionality. Let's jump into our game and have a look at that. So you'll see if I accelerate, we move forward, and if I brake, we come to an abrupt stop. It's just like a real car, it, when you start braking, from the time you start braking, there is some uh, momentum left in the car that needs to be handled. So if I brake at the starting line, you'll see it, that we don't actually immediately brake, we slow down to a stop. And we'll always be ending up just a little bit. You can tweak these values, guys. Obviously, if your sprites are bigger than my sprites, you're going to need to apply more force. If they're smaller, you're going to need to apply less force. Um, these values that I've come up with are just tr pure trial and error. So um, make sure you guys are, are testing these out. Try different values. If you're finding that you're not getting enough movement, try increase the amount of physics force that you're using. And if you have a big sprite that has a lot of density, you, you're going to need a lot more than 155 to push that forward, you know, in, in some cases you may go up to a thousand or, or you know, two thousand to create enough force to move those. I'm just going to name this parent, um, inherit parent, there we go. So keeping your code very clean guys, we want to keep this game as clean as possible so that you guys can expand it and actually turn it into a game of your own. So the thing we need to do next is we're going to need to create a NPC. So I'm going to do this the same as we did the player. I'm actually just going to duplicate the player, and I'm going to call this object underscore NPC. Now the difference in this in this one is we're going to get rid of the step event. We're also going to have some different uh, physics values. So our density is going to be 0 0.5. This makes it so that our player being a little bit heavier is able to actually push these guys around a little bit easier. And uh, their linear dampening is going to be set to 3. Their angular dampening is going to be set to 0 0.1. And that's going to do it for our physics for our physics variables. And then in the create event, we're going to add a script of code, and we're just going to call this initialize MPC. Now all we need to do is we just inherit the the base event here. So we say event inherited, and we're also going to say my target. <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> my target equals instance create going to be at x and y and the object is going to be object npc target now that object doesn't exist yet so we're going to have to create that so first i'm just going to create a sprite i'm just going to call this spr target i'm going to create a new sprite it's just going to be eight by eight pixels and I think you guys may have seen if you followed along with the rpg t tutorial you'll seen me use uh, targets to create movement um, for our NPCs before, but this effect works a lot better than that, I believe. There we go, so now we've got this target set up. We're just going to center that sprite and select OK. Now we're going to create another object, and this is going to be called object underscore NPC underscore target, and we're going to give it the sprite target icon. So what happens here, when an NPC is created, it creates a target for itself and it, set, it stores that target so it knows what its own target position is. Right? So if we create some NPCs on the map, again these are all inheriting from that base, if we just put 
put two or three of these here like that. And just move our guy probably just up there. When we run the game, what you'll see is each of those NPCs will now get a target. Uh, should get a target, but didn't. Let's find out why that didn't happen. Uh, that may be because we need to use the physics position instead. So let's just try PHY position X and PHY position Y. There we go. And the other thing I'll do is I'll just set depth to negative 1 so they actually appear above the car because that might be what was happening as well. They might have just been appearing below the car. Uh, no, that didn't happen either. So I'm just going to pause the video, figure out what happened, and I'll let you guys know straight away. Okay, so it actually was a um, an ordering issue. So the simple way to fix this is just to set the the car to depth zero. So for both the base and the NPC object, and the NPC target, you need to set to negative one. So the next thing we're going to do is jump back into the object car base and create a variable my target equals negative one. Uh, the next thing we do is we're just going to add a collision event with object car base and drag a code segment in there and just give this a title of this will happen. By doing this what we're actually doing is we're creating an action inside of this event so that the game maker compiler doesn't just strip it out because that does happen and then your collisions won't work. So I'm going to run this and have a look what we see. Now you'll see each of my NPC cars has a little dot above them and because we've enabled the physics we're actually able to push them around um, those dots don't do anything just yet, but they're actually there, and each one of those cars knows which dot belongs to itself. Sorry, <coughs> belongs to itself. So the thing we need to do now, now that we have this target, is actually create some sort of race race track. Now the way I did this in my example, and I'm going to show you guys a really simple way, is to create a path. I'm going to call this path race line one. I'm going to ma make this full screen, and I'm going to select the level 1 as the background for my room editor. I'm going to untick the closed button, and I'm going to change it to a smooth curve. And I'm just going to begin by placing some of these dots around the room where I think it will uh, where it'll be good to have them. We can come back and refine these points later. I'm just putting them in here so that we actually have something to work with. There we go. So after you've got these in, just connect them back up to where they are, and we can actually go around and start to modify these shapes so that they have better race lines. So here we go. That's, in my opinion, probably a much better race line from outside to inside, inside to outside, back to the outside, back to the inside, back to the outside, and then back to that inside line again. Maybe move that one there in a little bit. We'll take this inside line here. Let the car avoid, if we can, that dirt pit. There we go. So they avoid, so basically they're going to go around that. So you see that the curve goes around that. Or they're going to at least try to go around it. Um, they might fail miserably. <laughs> That'd be quite funny. Um, and then back up to our starting point. I might just move that up there just to satisfy that link there makes it look a little bit nicer so this is our first race line what we can do is we can duplicate this now we can make the second race line so we'll call this path race line 2 now the one thing to note is you don't want to change the amount of points that we've used to create this race line and the reason you don't want to do that is because um, <clears throat> the speed will change based on the car that's driving so this car isn't going to be as good this car is going to be slightly, slightly worse, so we're going to make these lines a little bit bigger. Um, not taking the optimum route, he's cutting through the center here, makes his drifts a little bit poor. Um, maybe he goes over that dirt patch, just tries to keep a straight line up that long straight, and probably overshoots a little bit because his cornering is not so great. And basically, all we're doing here is just trying to. Um, trying to create a couple of variations on that race line. So I'm going to duplicate the optimum race line again and call this path race line 3. And again all we do here is we're just going to modify these race lines. So I'm going to make this guy here take wide cornerings but still have an optimum still have a good a good line or good-ish line for 
for his actual driving. So maybe he has a little bit of overshoot, he tries to correct, comes really tight into this corner here. So he's going to have a big drift around this side here, or he may even try and shortcut through the grass because he's a cheater. Um, overshoots onto this grassy edge here, cuts back forward. Maybe, maybe let's make it a bit too much of a cut, I think. There we go. Cuts back forward in there like that. He also takes a path that avoids the grassy patches on the road. But he cuts this corner here. Um, let's make that. There we go. But he cuts this uh, top corner here. So these are going to be our three race lines. Now inside of our object NPC target, we're going to set up an array. And we're going to select a race line to follow. And we do this very simply. Just uh, add a create event. And add a code segment to that. We're just going to call this initialize race target. And what this is going to do is this is going to set up our, our race lines uh, and it's going to pick a random one. So we're just going to, first of all, we're going to randomize the seed. So randomize. There we go. If we apply a randomize function, what that does is it basically randomizes random. I don't know if you've noticed, but when you use the random functions inside of Game Maker, every time you run your game, they will come back at the same number, uh, even though you're using random. Once you call the randomize function, the random numbers will actually be random, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to say path 0 equals path race line 1. I'm going to do this for path, I'm going to have path 1 and path 2. And this time it's going to be called 2 and 3. So now we've got a, an array basically storing a, an index to these three race lines. And then all we need to do is say path underscore start. Now we say we're going to pluck one of those out in a second. We're going to set it at a speed of 2.7 plus random 0.5. So each car will get a different speed based on this. The end action is going to be 1, which basically tells it to repeat itself. And we do want it to be absolute. And that means it's going to actually it's going to start from the position that we started on the path, not the position that the car is currently in. Uh, now in this path section here, we're just going to say I random 2, because we have... 0, 1, 2, because random returns a number from 0 to 2, if we, set, if we select 2, we're going to get a random race line. Now if we start the game and have a look, you'll see that those four dots that we had from those NPCs will actually begin and start to take this course, and you'll see some of them are taking that optimal race line, some of them aren't, some of them are doing the overshoot that we expected, one of them's doing pretty poorly, you'll see some of them, might, one of them might actually cut through. They're all trying to avoid the dirt patches there. We had one that overshot at the back there. So these basically set up our targets. Now this is what the, the physics object is going to chase. Now because it knows that it has a target, it's going to be very easy to select to actually know. Sorry, it's because it knows that it has a target, it's going to be very easy for us to detect that it has a target. It should be following that this is an NPC compared to the player, which is also inheriting from the same base object. So jump back into your into your base uh, into your object car base, and this time we're going to add a step event. So I'm just going to add my step event in here, and I'm going to drag a code segment in. Now this section here at the top is going to be called NPC AI. Now under this section, we basically say if my target not equals negative one. So basically, if we have a target, because we initialize car base, my target is negative one. When we initialize the player, we don't set the my target, so it stays at negative one. So we're not going to do this for the player. But when we initialize the NPC car, we say my target equals instant create, therefore my target is no longer negative one, and this section of code will occur. The first thing we need to do is find out the direction. So I'm going to call this tdir, and that just stands for target direction, equals point direction. And that's going to be from x and y to my target dot x and my target dot y. Simple as that. The next thing we need to do is work out the uh, tx direction. So we're going to call this txd. So t underscore xd equals length de x. It's going to be a 145 in length and it's going to be at t underscore de in the direction of t dir. We're going to do the same thing for y, so we're going to call this t y d length dir y, and it's going to be in the same
same direction. Now the next thing we need to do is add a basically a physics apply force. So we're just going to add physics apply force. It's going to be from the x and y position that's going to be the center of our car. And it's going to be in the direction of t underscore xd and t underscore x, uh, yd. Okay. So now we're going to be applying force in the direction of the target at a speed of 145 pixels per hour we'll call it. That's just a random number. These numbers like I said I just pulled them out to uh, make them to see what would happen. Now you'll see the cars starting to chase those targets. They're cutting corners. We need to optimize these numbers a little bit because they're not going to be perfect because the targets might be moving too fast, the cars might be moving too slow. We need to optimize these numbers to get it right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to overload the physics rotation. So we're just going to say PHY rotation to be equal to negative t dir. This is this is the only reason we're doing negative t dir is because the difference between game maker's image angle and the Fox 2D physics engine they're actually 180 degrees out of phase. Uh, so we need to was 180 or was it 360? I can't remember. They're out of phase, so we need to invert it. And also, I'm going to subtract 90 degrees from this because our sprites are facing down when they should be facing to the right. And this is going to give us the right offset. There we go. So now you'll see the cars all begin chasing their targets and they're making appropriate turns based on their target locations. And you'll see by using the physics engine we're also inherently getting the same um, we're getting the same drifting that our player object can get simply because these objects here are using the physics engine that we're using. Now obviously the speed was too fast or the um, the car was too slow, so we need to adjust these variables. Uh, let's have a look. We could potentially increase the speed. Let's try 165. And we could also potentially slow down. That's looking a little better. Oh, that was lucky. We got all the same sprite. Um, I think I like that speed, so let's try and slow down the target. So now the targets are going at 2.7 plus random 1.5. Let's try 1.7 plus random. 0.5. There we go. Now you'll notice one of the cars does have a glitch happening there. That's because he was able to catch up with his target. We don't want the, the objects to be able to catch up with their targets, so we need to speed the targets up slightly. So let's try 2.0 plus random 0.5. And we're going to decrease this to 160. Like I said many times in these videos, guys, this is this is really a trial and error process. You just have to get these numbers right until it looks good. And I think those numbers that we've selected there look pretty good. You'll see they're starting to take some shortcuts. They're either not taking them appropriately or they're trying to cut in too early. This is just because their racing line is set of those um, in those paths. So by doing this, we get some sort of uh, basic car AI. It's not really AI in the classic form, but the illusion of AI, nonetheless, is is uh, quite good. And there we go. We have the basics of car AI. Is there anything else that I need to do in this video? Sorry, I'm just checking my notes here. I do take notes as I'm going through these videos. Um, I don't think there is. I think the next video we're going to be adding some sort of uh, particle effect, so I'm going to save that for the next video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope you enjoy following along with this series, and like I mentioned in the last video, if you have any any uh, feedback for the video in terms of feature requests, please save those for the final video and post them there. If you have any comments on this video, however, or any bugs and, and need help with this video in particular, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe the video. It really does help and encourage me to continue making these tutorials. Um, the support from, from the community has been quite good since I started doing this, so thank you guys heaps for you know subscribing and liking these videos. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.